The way I got involved in Into the Storm was actually New Line called me up and said that uh, this producer, Todd Garner, came to them with this amazing concept, uh, basically a first-person tornado disaster movie. And uh, I read the script and I was very intrigued and I immediately thought, well, this is a great opportunity to visually show an amazing thing. And the other thing that I, I really was attracted to it is there's no slow motion action sequences with the hero firing his AK-47 as a fireball erupts. It's all real natural phenomenon that is horrific, devastating, and yet beautiful all at the same time. And to capture that uh, was very intriguing to me. Into the Storm is a film that follows three different groups of people. Uh, one, a high school principal, Gary, and his two sons. Two, a group of storm chasers. And three, two guys, Rebus and Donk, which are basically redneck uh, YouTube video bloggers. And uh, what happens is these three different groups, which are independent and not related, all converge together when the largest tornado in history converges down the small community and basically these three groups of people have to try to persevere and use their resources to survive and, uh, and endure this horrific force that this tornado has. The first person camera aspect of this film allows the audience to be right there in the middle of the action. You know, everybody sees a tornado and you see a lot of YouTube clips and it's a really telephoto, far away shot of a tornado. But here it is, you're right in the middle, you're in the ground, you're seeing the tornado touch down and you're running away from it and you're right there with the people as opposed to being a, a presidium or with a traditional filmmaking style. It, it just adds a lot of immediacy and energy that you don't get any other way. One of the interesting things about this film is that the first person camera is almost the entire film is handheld. And unlike, say, a low budget horror movie that you'd have as a first person narrative, you can't just go off and sort of randomly shoot this stuff because you have wind machines, you have rain, you have all the things of a big budget movie that have to be pre planned and placed in certain positions. So we actually had to rehearse and make the handheld footage feel like it was done in a complete spontaneity uh, manner when in fact it was completely rehearsed and planned and we had every single beat had to be uh, 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 done exactly the way the special effects guys could have everything coordinated. So it was trying to make it just sloppy enough to be believable but yet get each of the key images and angles that we needed when we needed to see the tornadoes. The Titus was designed by a, a team headed by David Sanderfer, the production designer, and he's a big car guy who really knows, you know, the details of the of the design and what's important. And when they finished the Titus and showed it to me, I looked at it and said, "This is a really impressive looking vehicle." And then they, uh, we had a local Michigan. Uh, company that specializes in building prototype uh, uh, cars for the car manufacturers, the big three in Detroit, build the Titus for us. So what better place than to be in Michigan, Motor City, and have a group be able to build uh, this really cool um, vehicle for us. And they did a fantastic job. And uh, it, when they first delivered it, it was perfectly painted and it looked gorgeous. And I said, this is fantastic. But you know, guys, we got to muddy it up, dent it, make it look like it's been through 15 years of hell. And, uh, and so I, I was very impressed with the teams that created that. And it's just, it's a beast. It looks amazing. The tornadoes are almost like characters in a movie because we have different types of tornadoes. There are what they call the rope tornadoes, which are the very skinny, long tornadoes that often occur in groups, multiples, you know, multiple vortices. Then you have the fire tornado, which is actually a real phenomenon where when a tornado gets above a real fire, it sucks the fire up and creates a fire tornado. It basically looks like a tornado, only it's made out of fire. And then we also have a giant wedge tornado, which is over two miles wide, which is this enormous machine of destruction that can have wind speeds as high as 300 miles per hour inside that can just rip buildings and roofs off like they're, they're just you know, styrofoam. 